Good morning and welcome to Sunday morning worship on the second Sunday of Advent. We're so glad that you're here with us today. We have a special treat because the bells are going to be ringing a little bit later in the service, and so thank you, bell ringers. It's a beautiful piece that you guys have prepared. I want to highlight just a few announcements for you before we begin service this morning. Please notice that Blue Christmas is going to be this afternoon at five o'clock, excuse me, at three o'clock, at three o'clock. So we do invite you to that. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have lost someone this year to come to that. Uh, if this is simply a difficult time of year, a hard season, uh, you're invited to come for a service of peace um, and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ at this time. It's our great pri privilege to baptize little Theodore Jefferson Kern at the second service, so we keep uh, little Teddy's family in our prayers and uh, give them all of God's blessings and congratulations. Um, please notice also that we're going to be having the service for Elijah Peters. That will be this Wednesday at 10.30 a.m., and so we keep his mother Kyla and all of his family in our prayers as well. With that, please turn inside the front cover of your red hymnal to the brief order of confession and forgiveness, and rising, face the cross at the back of the church. We gather now for worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we sing our next hymn, I'm going to invite you to be seated. I missed a very important temple talk from Ms. Barb Showstack. Macy, can you rewind one slide for the temple talk, please? Hi. I'll bet you know what this is. It's called a doll. Well, you could classify it as a baby doll. That's what it is. You've all had one or your little people have had one. And I came today because I was asked to give a special announcement. Hey, St. John's, it's me from central Minnesota. I'm here to talk about Bethlehem Revisited, which is happening in 2022. And you people need to get going and think about those babies they need. Now, if I recall, they need nine babies, I think, three per shift. And so remember, it can be a girl or a boy baby, doesn't matter. And it doesn't have to be the biological parents. I just mean that somebody can step in and be the Mary and the Joseph and have an infant for baby Jesus. Now, remember, you get your own place to stay and sit where you're comfortable and warm, and you get your own wardrobe. Everything is fine and dandy. I have a feeling the same people will be in charge of the costumes. It's all ready to go. All you have to do is say yes. Now, if you are not in the realm of having your own infant there, then ask your friends, ask your relatives, ask your kids. Ask your grandchildren. Now calculate it out, people. You can't be just sitting on this for a long time. You gotta get some action going. So I'm here, 
you're there. But the message is still the same. They need babies. You can do it for them. Blessings from Central Minnesota and me. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Mrs. Shostak. It's a lovely time to see her again. Now, let's join our voices in hymn number 264, Prepare the Royal Highway. The Kyrie and Hymn of Praise is found on page 203. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all people in the world knowledge of your, your salvation. For we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we'll light the Advent candle. And so, Ian, if you would, please. be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Malachi, chapter 3. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord host. Who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. The word of the Lord. Please join in a responsive prayer for Luke 1. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people for the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercies of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in a way of peace. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 1. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For the God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
Glory to you, O Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip the ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Licentius and the ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite all the grown-ups to be seated, but kids, if you'd like a closer look at this telescope up here, I invite you to come forward this morning. It's a pretty impressive telescope. It's Mr. Rathke's. So if you'd like to come up and look at this, please come forward. We've got some special stuff to show you here with it, too. Good morning. I have to make sure I keep my microphone on. All right. Okay, good morning. You guys can come up. You guys can come up tall this way. All right. Come on up here. All right. This is a, this is a, this is a pretty impressive uh, telescope, right? What do we use telescopes for? Can you tell me? Do you know? What do we use telescopes for, Carter? To look at, to look at planets, right. And what else do you think we look at telescopes with, Addison? What else do we use telescopes to look at? Stars, of course, right? Isn't this kind of neat here? All right, do you know what these are? This is a map. You can go ahead and take that, Callie. Do you want to hold on to that? You can hold on to that for a minute or two, right? This is a map of the night sky, right? And so you would use this map and you'd say, okay, I'm going to look over here in this direction now for this star of Lyra, okay? But of course, you know, you could see Lyra with your naked eye if you just went outside at night and it was dark outside. But if you use this telescope, what would this telescope do to that star? Hmm? What would it show us? Right? If, you, if you look through the eyepiece here and you were looking at that star, would it still be teeny, teeny, tiny? What would it, what would it look like? It would be big, right? Wouldn't it? So this telescope helps us see the stars and the planets and the heavens Everything that God has made in the whole universe, in the whole cosmos, isn't that pretty spectacular? Of course, God made the star that shone over the city of Bethlehem too, right? Where Jesus was born. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that next week, all right? But I want to ask you this question, okay? If this telescope here helps us see the stars in the heavens above, What do you think could help us see the baby Jesus? How do you think, would this telescope help us see the baby Jesus? No, no, probably not. How do you think we could see the baby Jesus, right? What would we use to see Jesus in the world, in our lives? What do you think? Parker, you got a guess? No? I bet you have one of these at home already. It's not a telescope, right? But I bet you have, right, either one of the Sunday school Bibles for, or maybe you have uh, even one of the third grade Bibles too. Not yet, huh? It's coming up, right? It's coming up. So, but the Bible helps us see Jesus just like this telescope helps us see the stars in the heavens above, Okay. So when you wonder, who is Jesus? What does he look like? What does he say? What does he speak to us? What does he tell us? Well, we can know those things when we read our Bible. And so that's why we make sure that every kid has a Bible, because it's really important. How else are we going to be able to see Jesus, right? I suppose we could see him too at church, right? And we do in the faces of all these people. And we see him in the stained glass, right? Or we see him in pictures, right? Maybe you've seen like a, like a painting of Jesus, okay? All right, of course, there's no cell phone pictures of Jesus, are there? But the best way to see Jesus is to read through the Bible with your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa and read the stories of Jesus, all right? 
I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of the stories next week. We're going to talk about the star of Bethlehem, and you'll get another chance to come up and see this telescope, okay? And if you want to see it after church today, too, just come on up with your mom and dad, and you can look at this, all right? Would you fold your hands, please? All right, and I'll say a little prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your word that we may see Jesus clearly, that he may be brought into focus for us. O Lord, let the light and the love of your son Jesus shine brightly in our hearts for all the world, for every person to see. We pray in his holy name. Amen. Thanks, everyone. I'll take those sky maps, please, for the next service. Thank you, Addison. You guys can go be seated. Well, dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, who gives us eyes to see. Amen. Um, so how is it that we see something, right? Uh, you may know that I just got back from a, a little bit of vacation up in northwest Wisconsin. We have a family cabin up there. And so uh, year after year, it's the only place I've been every year of my life, ever since I was just a baby, in fact, um, I go up for deer season, right? And, uh, you know, when you think about, when you think about um, uh, looking for deer, right, uh, everybody would love to see a deer like this. Every deer hunter, boy, <clears throat> excuse me, if they saw a deer like this, it would be, wow, uh, it's a big buck like that, big antlers, and uh, what, a beautiful, what a beautiful animal. You really can't see it so well in this slide uh, because uh, the, the projector is losing a little bit of color, but there's a blue sky behind this deer, right? And it's just magnificent. But if this is the picture that you have <clears throat> in your mind's eye, when you uh, go out uh, for deer season, when, when you go out deer hunting, then you're probably not going to see any, any deer. Because really, deer don't look like this. They don't look like this at all. Uh, if you were to go out deer hunting, uh, this is what you would see. Hmm? Can, can you see the deer? There's three of them. There's three of them, right? But um, uh, this is how deer ordinarily look, okay? So you have, to, you, you have to set your mind's eye, you have to prepare yourself for this question, what do I expect to see? What do I expect uh, to see? Now, notice that really what you're looking for here is um, uh, horizontal lines, okay? So you see the horizontal line of the, of the animal's back, okay? Or maybe you see um, a little bit, of, the first thing you would notice is maybe a twitch of the ear, okay? But you're not going to see a deer standing out in the open like this. If this is your expectation, um, you're, going to, you're going to miss what it is that you're really looking for. You have to prepare yourself to look for something like this. Well, why am I talking about this? Well, so how do we prepare ourselves to see Jesus, right? Uh, what is our expectation in this time of Advent when we are awaiting this season of Christmas, right? Um, this is a rendition, this is an icon of, um, of St. Nicholas, okay? But unless you know the, the story of Christmas, the whole story of Christmas, and how St. Nicholas of Myrna would give small sacks of gold to poor children as a way of helping the needy, right? if you didn't have this picture in your mind's eye, then you would have gotten off on the wrong foot uh, in thinking about Christmas, right? Because this is how the world and American society today portrays St. Nicholas as, as Santa Claus, right? And uh, while he's still got the bishop's hat there, like St. Nicholas, Bishop of Myra, and he's still got the shepherd's crook, okay, there to tend the sheep, the flock of God, right? Um, you know, you can kind of see how he looks a little bit more like a, a, a jolly St. Nicholas uh, who's carrying a sack of toys on his shoulders uh, for all the good children, right? But that's that's really not the story of, of Christmas, is it? Um, so if you don't properly prepare your vision, well, then you're going to be, you're going to be misled. Um, you're, you're going to miss seeing Jesus. Right? If you picture Jesus in your mind's eye, maybe you picture some of the stained glass windows in the church, 
Uh, or, or maybe you picture Jesus as, as someone like this. And I suppose he could have been. You know, it's, it's a little hard to see him there. It's a bright background. Um, or maybe you picture the baby Jesus in this, this sort of uh, ideal nativity scene. Um, but I don't know. I don't know that, uh, that that would really help us to see Jesus in the world. I mean, after all, what if, what if Jesus kind of looked like, like, this, like this fellow, right? Would you recognize him if you passed him on the street? So what are our expectations for seeing the Lord in this time of Advent when we look for, when we look for Jesus? I mean, if you were walking down the street, would you, would you be able to pick Jesus out of a crowd? And you might if, if you thought to yourself, well, how is it that I expect to see Jesus in the world today? Like in the children's sermon, the first place that we turn to when we ask ourselves, what should my expectations be? We turn to Scripture. And so we remember that uh, Isaiah says, you know, when, when you picture Jesus, when you picture the Messiah, he was not something beautiful and wonderful to look at, but his form was, was actually repulsive. Um, that in taking on the sin of the world, he becomes almost disfigured. I suppose Isaiah is, is especially thinking of Christ's suffering on the cross, that he was a hideous sight. All right? But Isaiah and all of Scripture help us to properly form our expectations for seeing Jesus in the world. So um, I'll just go through these real quickly. I'll just put all of these up. Uh, the questions that we have to ask ourselves is what, what forms my picture of Jesus? To some extent, tradition and all the things that we do for Christmas, to some extent that forms our picture of Jesus. And that's not necessarily bad, mind you. It's not bad at all if we keep it in the proper perspective. Uh, sometimes culture forms our expectations of Jesus, who we might picture. But again, the best way to, to test our expectation is to say, what do we read in the Gospels? What do the Gospels tell us about how Jesus was born? You know, it wasn't this beautiful picture of a stable and a manger, and, and uh, you, you know, it was probably a pretty rough place when Mary laid Jesus down in, in whatever rags she had swaddled him in. Um, another place that we can see Jesus is when we confess the creeds. Now, we don't so much picture the infant Jesus in the creeds, but we are reminded of his life, of his suffering, of his death, of his resurrection. So the creeds properly orient us. Okay? So... Um, this is how we form our expectation for who Jesus is. There's one last thing I should mention about this. When you, when you think about how am I going to see the Lord in the world, maybe the first thing to do is to say, well, am what I'm seeing, is, is it what I want to see? Am I pleased to see this? Am I happy to see this? Because if I am, then maybe I ought to be especially careful to check my expectation. Because there's no easier person to deceive myself than me. Hmm? So we have, to, we have to ask ourselves, who do we expect to see in this season of Advent? Right? These are beautiful renditions. They remind us of all the story of God in Christ Jesus. But friends, we have to be prepared to see Jesus amongst people that we would never picture first in our mind's eye. We have to go beyond those initial expectations and those traditional pictures so that we might expect to see Christ in the faces of all our neighbors. Why? Because this is the witness of Scripture and this is the good news that God has come to be with you and with all the people of the world. Peace be with you as you wait and watch for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let's join our voices together in singing hymn number 255. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer for God's people in this place and for all the world over in their time of need. O Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise that you have let the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, shine brightly in all the world. O Lord, so open our eyes and warm our hearts that we might eagerly share your love in Jesus with all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially, Lord, we ask your gentle and healing hand upon any for whom this is a difficult season. O Lord, give strength and encouragement. Give peace of mind and contentment. Give trust and the assurance that you have made a place both in the life that is to come and that you remember your people here in this first life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the leaders of the nations the world over that they would pursue peace that they would seek justice, that they would labor on behalf of the good of their people. O Lord, through all the nations and with all leaders, we ask that you help them to work for good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Oh Lord, we pray for peace in our nation, in our schools, in our communities. Keep safe all children, teachers, and staff, and faculty. O oh Lord, surround them with your love. Lift them up in learning. Open their minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially let down your Holy Spirit, dear God, upon Tim, and Judy, Amy, Dieter, Todd, Adam, and Judy. O oh Lord, watch over Steve, Ron, Stu, Tyler, Chase, Jan, and Norm. O oh Lord, give every blessing for Sharon, Jeremy, Gavin, Diane, and Sandy. Continue to pour out your Spirit upon Dennis, Doug, Denise, Todd, Keith, and Christy. O oh Lord, stay close to the side of Janet, Dennis, Dwayne, and Camden, Lily, Cade, and Dylan. O oh Lord, pour out all of your mercy upon Moni, Tyra, Mark, as well as all of those whom we name now in our heart of hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, give hope and encouragement to all the family of Jane Schaefer, that in her passing they may know that she has been seated at that banquet table that has no end, and give every comfort and peace to all the family of Elijah, especially to his mother Kyla and all of Elijah's siblings, his father, and all who have loved him. O oh Lord, watch over them. Give them your peace. Give them your encouragement. Give them hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of Advent, O oh Lord, let us look for your Son, Jesus, and all the people around us, that we might see your work in this world, and that we might be eager participants in all that you do. We pray all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the sign of Christ's peace with one another. You may be seated.
The Lord be with you. Dear friends in Christ, it was in the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed that he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering our Lord together, let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the table is set, all is prepared, and our Lord says, come and dine. And so regardless of whatever congregation you would ordinarily attend, you are welcome at the table. Please be seated, coming forward in a single fashion, single file line at the instruction of your usher.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray in your mercy that you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is number 253, He Came Down. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.